was 20 when I had my daughter, not married. In our culture, you are forced into marriage with that person. I told myself, if I don't stand up for myself now, who will speak out for me? I told my parents that once you take me to that house, I will die. So I was a single mom. My neighbor introduced me to Waza. Women of Zimbabwe arise. She said that Waza teaches people about human rights and also campaigning for social justice. After a few months in the organization, I joined other women in a protest walk to stop the passing of the NGO bill. They were going to close all the international human rights organizations. So we took it to the streets. During that walk, we became one family. All we could do was to bond with each other. The police van just showed up from nowhere. The police were in full riot gear, helmets, tear gas. That was the first time I ever was arrested. We were put into a small cell. All 40 of us squeezed there. It was dark. There was just one filthy toilet. All of a sudden, the women said, let's just make noise for them. We started singing, dancing. It was such a wonderful thing that it erased the horror that I was feeling. We managed to keep the police officers awake the whole night. I was so proud that the NGO bill was never passed. After nine years being a human rights activist, the government is still harassing us. I have been beaten, arrested, intimidated so many times. One time, I was beaten about nine times, told to count how many strokes. There was this old woman next to me. She was also beaten. I stood up and I just screamed for them to stop. I didn't care whether they would do anything more to me because I had had enough. I started thinking, is it worth it? What if I died? I collect the letters from the people that stand up for us. Support and solidarity brings us hope and it drives the authorities to step back. I will continue with the struggle until I see a change in Zimbabwe. Eventually at the end, we might be able to enjoy our human rights like human beings.